Check us out in Milwaukee at the Con Midwest Gaming Classic, April 29th to May 1st. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. Back in January, the trailer for a film was released that everybody proclaimed couldn't be real. Must be made up. Nobody's this high. It's an animated foreign version of Pinocchio. It's called a true story, I think based on the fact that's true this is a story. And yes, has Pauly Shore as the little wooden boy. Father, tell me, when can I leave to be on my own? Everybody swore it had to be a joke, but sure enough, it came out. And it is everything you want it not to be. Already being ranked with Plan 9, The Room, and Birdemic, Pinocchio A True Story is one of the most entertainingly and hilariously bad movies in some time. In a market where studios now specialize in banking on this, it becomes trickier and trickier to stand out. But man, this one sure does. With awkward animation, a ludicrous story that if you took out the wooden puppet would have no connection to the original, and of course, spectacular voice miscasting, this has already been deemed by many as a cult classic. Little is known about its development and whether or not this bizarre miscasting was intentionally bad or not, but watching it over? Nah, it has to be. Don't get me wrong, I'd be laughing even harder if this was meant to be taken seriously, but... I'm sorry I have to talk to my father first. His, his name is Geppetto. No, 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 it has to be intentional. For an actor whose career has often been called artistic mass genocide, he brings to life what would be a forgettable tablet movie to play for your kids and transforms it into a cinematic catastrophe. I had such a good time laughing my ass off at this, and I can't wait to share it with you. So let's not waste any time, we got the whole world to see! This is Pinocchio, a true story. So who financed this true story anyway? Oh, okay, now true story is starting to make a little bit more sense. The part where Putin placed the muscle-bound blue fairy was a pretty good tip-off. I get the feeling there was a Ukrainian casting director for this movie. Greetings, noble senors and senoritas. We open on a horse named Tybalt, voiced by John Heater. And while Shore is certainly gonna steal all the comedic attention, Heater really sounds like he's having a ball trolling this movie too. He goes back and forth between using his normal voice. Someone here has sausages for brains. I have to admit, I agree with your pricing. Don't you worry, Senor Geppetto. And a very generic, horsey voice. Evil spirits? No way! Pinocchio, I don't like it here one bit. And we promise never to come back. The amount of energy he puts into trying so hard not to try so hard is equally hilarious. <laughs> you know they cut just before he bursts out laughing saying, I can't believe I'm getting a paycheck for this. The story I'm about to tell you is mysterious. Wow, that thing is not even alive yet and I'm ready to shit myself. Who makes a puppet head like that? They're usually laughing or smiling, not wondering how your skull will look balanced on a pencil. Why don't you make yourselves comfortable? Nothing about this is gonna make me comfortable. I'll tell you what really happened to the wooden boy. Tom Kenny plays Geppetto, which is ironic as for a man paid to do funny voices, he probably has the most restrained one in the movie. What should we name you? Leonardo. He'd grow up to be a selfish actor or a turtle who only cares about pizza. By the way, if you're thinking, oh man, it's gonna be a bunch of dated fourth wall jokes, that is literally the only one in the movie. They got it out in the first three minutes and it never goes self-aware again. That's like Mr. Freeze making one ice pun and then never again for the rest of his life. I guess I'm grateful, but still a little weird. Literally in the next scene, a fairy named Lucilda shows up to pick up her broken magic wand that Geppetto was fixing. Four minutes in and already I feel like we missed an entire movie before this. 
I've fixed your wand just like you asked. Oh, and here's a fun game. Try to guess what accent she has. Geppetto, my dear old friend, you truly are exceptionally gifted. What can I ever do to repay you? You're absolutely right, boss New Yorkland France. As you'd imagine, she brings Pinocchio to life, and is there a horror version of Pinocchio? There is? Well, here's another one. <laughs> This really calls for a worm tongue tear, like, oh god, what have we unleashed? Give credit too, that just like Tommy was so in the room, Shore's literal first words are so tonally off, it works its way to masterpiece. Alive! Uh, I'm a boy and I'm alive! Uh. Don't make me reconsider this man's comedic potential. I have not the power, spirit! I have not the power! As the credits roll, Pinocchio rides his horse Tybalt me, 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 me. and is bursting with energy. <laughs> <laughs> that almost looks dirty, but then again, everything with Polly Shore almost looks dirty. Clearly, a puppet coming to life has no story possibilities, so let's introduce our first subplot. Detective Constable, you don't think it's suspicious that there's no one suspicious in your home? Yeah, even their side story has trouble getting going. As this detective is suspicious, Geppetto isn't suspicious, so he inspects their place but gets distracted and vanishes. Did you hear that? Follow me. The funny thing is, there actually is a subplot later about a circus robbing people. He could have said he was there for that, but no, he just says complete gibberish and disappears. I guess what I'm saying is don't blame Shore entirely for how embarrassing this is. It was a group effort. Hello, Signora. We're looking for a fairy named Lucilda. Is that you? With that said, Shore's beautifully tone-deaf obnoxiousness is the stuff of legend. Every line sounds like he's drunkenly trying to climb into the sound booth. Come on, Tibbo! Let's see what it was! <laughs> it's like one day he said, let me do an impression of Stone Snagglepuss, and it lasted him the rest of his life. I've got the whole world to see. Father, tell me, when can I leave to be on my own? It's the Leaning Tower of Please Stop! Meanwhile, somebody said, let's do Nightmare Alley for kids, as we see a nearby circus ran by dirty businessmen trying to come up with a new act. We just need to come up with a new act. Well, I'm open for suggestions. Heh! <laughs> That's Mr. Ha to you. Well, you ask for suggestions. <laughs> Is this a thing? Every sentence ending with someone violently hacking up a barnyard sound? One of their carriages goes out of control, holding a girl named Bella on board. And of course, Pinocchio is there to save her. The coach is headed for the cliff. She's gonna fall. Go! <laughs> you went the wrong way. You pointed that way, but you're going that way. This movie literally can't get left and right down. <laughs> he ends up saving the corpse bride. No, really, she is the corpse bride before she died. But the circus folk can't believe there's a talking wooden boy. Or that he randomly switches accents like everyone else in this. My greeting, sir. <laughs> Jesus! I mean, okay, if Polly Shore's voice came out of anything, I can't act like I wouldn't do the same. He's of course okay, and Tibble questions the sanity of what's going on, as I imagine all of you are. And that leaves one question. Who's the real monster here? No, I'm the real monster here? What's going on? Have you seen him ride that horse? No reins at all! I love the fact that he's a talking puppet is kind of a side thing, next to the fact that he can ride a horse. That also nobody questions can talk. Though I guess there are also human-sized cats and foxes who speak, so maybe it's not that impressive. Regardless, they ask him to join the circus, but Geppetto is not that enthused. He literally convinces himself, though, with no help from Pinocchio. I just need you, Pinocchio. Your own home should never feel like a prison. You can go. I was on the fence, but then I discussed it with the rest of the underground, and they were okay with it. Let's go, Tybalt! Great adventures await! Agreed, a lot of epic, timeless stories would be made better with the addition of Skadee, Skadee, Skadee. Gandalf riding into Helm's Deep. To the king! Gettysburg's bayonet charge. And of course, the battlefield run in 1917. What has Cinema been missing without Skidi Skidi Skidi? He ends up joining the circus and wows the people with his incredible talent of reusing the same animation. 
I promise we'll go back to my father as soon as we see the world. There was no script to this. The Russians just sent animation with their mouths moving and said, say whatever you want. Why don't you just say the horse is going to be his father? What? You want me to be your father? How'd that even come up? Bella performs as well with a song sequence that looks and sounds like another musical. There are no limits for me in a big top up here. To be fair, I do buy this is more of a true story than The Greatest Showman. And sparks seem to fly between the two. Your song was so beautiful, Bella. And you were so brave. To be in the movie with me. Any of this is phenomenally brave. Tibble tries to give him advice about how to court her. Oh, what, is your angelic voice not enough? I'm not going to spend my life waiting for you to make up your mind. <laughs> is that clown just watching them the whole time? Oh, and I don't mean just now. I mean the whole time. Every time he's on screen, he has the possessed look of death. If you told me this was an It prequel called Pennywise A True Story, I'd probably follow it more. Who's there? It's just me. What if Pauly Shore is just a troll on the idea of entertainment? Like, the whole idea. Like, people are saying, I'm gonna tell stories and take people places, and Shore's like, Ha! I'm gonna do the exact opposite of that! Just remind people they haven't gone anywhere and they're just in a room with a jerk! You know, I wouldn't pay to see him, but I pay to see people who pay to see him. Bella suspects the circus owner is up to something and tries to convince Pinocchio to leave before they do something bad to him. Get out! Leave! I don't even like you! <laughs> oh, I have to act like I have emotions for Polly Shore! Oh. We know you loved Pauly Shore's Pinocchio, or at least you watched Pauly Shore's Pinocchio. So, we've opened up a studio hoping to capitalize on this confusing but apparently profitable fad. It's Dumpster Fire Studios! We take familiar public domain cartoons and ruin them by miscasting people who were kind of a thing in the 90s. Like Kel Mitchell as Daffy Duck. Whoa! I'm like a duck, man! Not to be confused with Duck Man, which was another 90s thing. Yeah. Uh, just stick to the script, Mr. Mitchell. No, oh, man, that's why people watch these. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Fudd, what's with all the hostility, man? Is it because I'm black? Uh, I know that worked on Good Burger, but I don't think that would work today. Mr. Fudd, perhaps we could put our differences aside, man, and find solidarity with the Lord. What? This isn't a religious cartoon, Mr. Mitchell. But he has a collar. I just assumed he was a pastor like me. Daffy's not a pastor and neither are you. Actually, he is. Ducks can't be ordained. No, Kel Mitchell. Kel Mitchell is a licensed pastor. Welcome to the good word, home of Jesus. Can I get an amen? Because we're going to need forgiveness after this. With other 90s stars like Janine Garofalo as Minnie Mouse. Okay, so we're going to surprise Mickey with some cookies like his mother used to make. Yeah, this is why no one looks forward to Minnie Mouse cartoons. Uh, your voice needs to match lip movements. A little bit. Whatever. Next scene, I guess. Wow, I wanted to make some cookies like your mother used to make, and now they're all burnt up. My mother used to burn them all the time. <laughs> fuck you, you fucking rat bastard. You want to fucking make me feel better? Support me at the Free the Nipple protest I was at today. Uh, Minnie doesn't swear. Minnie doesn't have any fucking breasts either, man. What the fucking kind of cartoon is this? Fuck this noise. I quit. Ah, oh, shit. Now we need a replacement. And that's the last time I'm ever making brownies or coke or whatever I just made. Close enough. And no 90s callback is complete without Jeff Goldblum as Popeye. Ah, uh, now, now Bluto, perhaps uh, we should not fight over a woman named after a uh, healthy Mediterranean fat. Extra virgin Mediterranean fat. Oh, uh, ow. oh, you have done it now, sir. The spinach with all of its uh, folic acid and essential uh, vitamins and minerals, it's in my system. You can see it in here with the music that da 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 come back. Not that is Sailor Theory. Yes. None of those matches lip movements. But that's Popeye anyway. Yeah. Dubster Fire Studios. We specialize in. Huh? place he finds he misses Pinocchio and his terrifying screams of joy. <laughs> Yippee! 
if a haunted house could drink absinthe. Those are the sounds it would make. And he decides to go searching for him. It's time for me to stop sitting around and go find my boy. I'll go where all circuses go. The sea! I pray there aren't any whales there. Oh wait, that's the silly fairy tale version. In the true story, the talking horse tells Polly Shore Puppet he should listen to the clown who knows where a fairy is. She has very powerful magic. I'm sure she could turn you into a real boy. Well, I'll be eating you in the morning. Just lay some barbecue sauce by your bed. At least we can say when Shore is nominated for an Oscar, we got the clip to show. The real clown here is you, Pinocchio. Whatever. I'll just go by myself. <laughs> they decide to go find the fairy when they discover a tent the fox and cat set up. I'm just cautious. <laughs> Did you like my yak jerking a dolphin sound effect? They pretend to be Lucilda to rob him of his money. Whoa, that ain't looking like something else. Whoa, cat's really scared of ghosts, huh? After outrunning the catsman, it was that or Ku Klux Claw, I flipped a coin. They make it to the mountain where Lucilda is said to be. When her parrot tries to scare them away, Pinocchio has to teach Tibble to teach him. Yeah, don't worry, that didn't make any sense. As my father, you should say, don't give up, son, never turn back. <laughs> Yeah. When they told Shore he had to instruct a horse to act like his father, he said, Oh, okay, this is actually more down to earth than my usual stuff. They make it past the parrot's tricks and finally approach Lucilda, who sadly says she can't help him. I'm afraid there is nothing I can do to help. Miracles are priceless. I'd argue curse is more the word when referring to your work. Well, it was nice meeting you. Sometimes a horse needs not John Heater's voice to get across such heartbreak. Remember this, the best miracles in this life always happen without any help from us fairies. Now back to Pole New Zebrid, France. What accent is that? Aww. Fun fact, when the director told Shore to sigh like he gives a crap, he said he didn't know how because he's never done it before. We detectives lead the way. They discover the detective from earlier. Yeah, he's still in the story. Who reveals that the circus is robbing people's homes while everyone watches their show. And he thinks Pinocchio is the ringleader. We have to get out of here as soon as we possibly can. Yes, but first I have to talk to Bella. I want this entire performance as my ringtone. Yeah, okay, I'm already sick of that. This causes a rift between the two of them, but it's cool. Two ghost versions of Tibble convince him to go back. One could easily break him in half. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Pinocchio says what Shore says every time someone asks him to act. How do humans do it? It seems so hard. And he's captured by the detective, but Tibble arrives just in time. Up to this moment, gentlemen, you've only seen my good side. I just assume nobody's good side is being seen in this. Tybalt saves Pinocchio, and he tries to sneak into the circus to find Bella. Music, shush, I'm trying to snoopity. Where is she? She's perfectly safe and sound. Pinocchio demands where Bella is, but they're not going to give him any answers. Let her go this instant, you hear me? Pinocchio, what are you doing here? Oh, why were we talking like you were kidnapped or something? I mean, I guess you are a pretty useless character. Maybe they just assumed you exist to be rescued. My son. They do reveal, though, that they kidnapped Geppetto. I guess that technically makes more sense than being in a whale. And the owner wants him to make even more walking, talking puppets. You, sir, are a monster. No, I just didn't get enough sleep. <laughs> I'm not sure the movie gets that joke. Bella bumps into Tybalt and says she needs his help saving Pinocchio. Where did you get that handkerchief? It was with me when Munchafoko found me in the woods as a child. I'm sorry, did they put Wawa music over her being abandoned as a baby? Did Polly Shore do the music as well? Tybalt finds Pinocchio and Geppetto and says he has a plan. What do you think we should do, Tybalt? Because we're so stupid, we're asking a horse. He tells them to put on the show as planned, but everyone bands together and sings that their owner is robbing everybody while they're at the circus. 
some thieves are hiding, gallo guests and robbing everyone. Weird song. Well, can't wait to get back home to all my belongings. Fiona tries to get away by throwing a lantern. <laughs> which the director clearly thought looked more impressive than it did, and it very selectively chooses to burn certain parts of the circus down. Pinocchio sacrifices himself to save Bella. Yeah, see why everyone just assumes you're always in danger? And this, of course, turns him into a real boy. Buddy, you are alive! Human now. What? Sweet, now the only wood is in my pants! Oh, but that's not the end. As it turns out, the detective who had little to no purpose in this story, big twist, is Bella's long lost father. Nobody asked for this. My darling little daughter went missing. And that's when, that's when I decided to become a detective. Like, it's not the vibe, stop! We're given some beautiful jump cut fireworks. They continue the circus with new owners and Tybalt and Pinocchio finish with their new act. <laughs> One of the craziest goddamn things you'll ever see in your life. It goes without saying, this movie is bad. But I'm convinced the people dubbing it knew that and decided to have fun with it. In some ways it reminds me of Ghost Stories, the anime nobody thought was being watched so they made up their own lines just to troll with the few people who did. Well, that blew up over time and in a strange way, I hope something like this blows up over time. Not the film itself, that looks like it already has a following. I'm talking about this idea of miscasting foreign films. I really wasn't joking with that sketch in the middle. I really do want to see a genre of movies where the dialogue is kept the same, they attach a cheap celebrity that totally doesn't match, and they just have a ball. I'm truly hoping this isn't the last we've seen of this idea, because good god, it did what I thought was impossible. It made Pauly Shore hilarious. I have no doubt he is in on the joke, as is John Heater and probably everyone else involved. Yeah, on the American side, anyway. This movie shows sometimes you just need the right person for the right part, or even the wrong person for the wrong part, in order to make something hilariously memorable. I love the shit out of this abomination, and I hope to see a lot more abominations like it in the future. Skidee, skidee, skidee. <laughs> Nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. Alive! I'm a boy and I'm alive! Hey everybody, still doing cameo for charity. And this month, the money I receive goes to Razum for the Ukraine. If you want me to say happy birthday or best wishes or just about anything at all, go ahead and get a cameo from me and be giving to a good cause. And even if you're like, screw you, I don't want a cameo from you, check out the charity anyway. It's a wonderful one to donate to, or if you don't have money to donate, please consider at least spreading the word about the good that they do so that maybe others can help out. Thank you so much.